uh, this World Cup has been sort of it's it, it marks a passage in time that okay from here is going to be your next step. If you want to build a great cricket team, you have consistency of performance over a long period of time is what you need. Consistency means titles. Consistency means domination. Hello everybody, we are going to be talking about India's T20 World Cup win for a very long time. It's the ultimate validation for our world-class men's cricket team to be world champions. To find out what this latest iconic milestone means for Indian cricket and for Indian sport, and also to find out what this victory means off the sporting field, I'm going to be talking to one of India's most respected sports journalists and columnist, Sharda Ugra. She's also my go-to person to talk about all the big moments in Indian and world sport. Sharda, thank you so much for making time and badhai ho or congratulations. Hi, hi, Anuradhi. Really, but hi, oh, it's just such, such a great day. Uh, you know, we are still sort of walking around in this happy haze of uh, what happened in that in that game on Saturday night, which was just completely up, down, sideways and all that. We were like totally churned. But what a great finish and what a super performance uh, by by the cricket team. Just really astonishing. Everything that we had dreamt of that they were going, that they were capable of doing, they actually pulled off on that day. It was just incredible. Loved and it. it's in interesting because the last time we spoke was after the ODI World Cup final, which India, you know, had the crashing defeat because it was undefeated in all the matches up to that final match. And here, we, the Indian team had a similar trajectory, isn't it? Undefeated in the group stage, undefeated in the super, you know, in the super eight, yes. the two groups, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it was incredible uh, the fact that there was this uh, performance of this type. Not surprising though, because they had literally uh, planned so well. They had picked the right players. I mean, the luck was on their side as well. Luck plays has a little role to play in the tosses you win and the decisions you take, and that worked for them, which is great. And uh, the fact that we had beaten Australia earlier, because according to me, the one team that turns up like a beast in any ICC trophy final are the Australians. No matter who they're playing, what their form is, if they turn up at a final, they're very hard to beat. And the point is we were able to stop them uh, earlier and then thanks to Afghanistan, they were stopped at uh, before the knockouts as well. What would you pick as your highlights? I mean, uh, a lot of people are talking, of course, about that catch. Either way, uh, had it ended, it would have been a, uh, it would have been sort of a redemption and a, and a, and a, and a great uh, uh, sort of surge of joy for either of the two countries you're just happy that it happened to be the one that you that you are from and that uh, that you support i think the match uh, um, it is basically two innings it's it's uh, you know the the indian batting as well as you had kohli's innings as well you had uh, all the wickets that we lost early i think the game changed at the point where we thought that it was over you know 30 the, the 15th over yes yes the thir 30 30 runs from 30 balls we thought yeah. the game actually ended over there and there was just one thing at the back of your head that bumrah's got to bowl bumrah's got to bowl you know bumrah's got his overs because bumrah is the kind of player just just is the kind of player that we've not seen who literally turns up and delivers and i keep saying he del doesn't deliver like a postman he delivers like e email he goes zap and he just destroys you know he knows what to do at that time he's in so much in control of his skill and his awareness of what the conditions and he was able to do that and but at the same time also hardik pandya is coming in and saying that i can soak in pressure like a sponge which is so hard to do and to do it not in one over but to do it in two it was just mind boggling um, how the team lifted at, at that particular point in time. And, and what was also very interesting is that they kept pushing. You know, I love to see the fact that they kept pushing and saying it's, it's possible that we can stop this. We can stop this avalanche of sadness come back onto our heads and just turn it and topple it over. I mean, the catch was just... I thought it was over. You know, I thought the I thought the the game was gone if if David Miller hit that six. It, it didn't mean there was they needed fourteen or something. There's still eight runs more, but I thought it was over. But then that catch turned up and you said, This is it, this is our game. And there's so much of cricket you realize at times like this just rests on margins. Like someone said, if Surya had a shoe size larger, <laughs> he would have stepped on the rope. I think it was that. It was those last five uh, minutes because you can watch everything else dispassionately up to a point and say okay this happened that happened this is good that this is how they pace they south africa hit a boundary in every single over that they played and we didn't we missed out on a lot of boundaries at some point but that those last five overs were like 
2020 crunched into that last half an hour of absolute madness. So elaborate a little bit more on Jaspreet Bumrah because, you know, the way you describe it, I mean, aren't all bowlers expected to do that? I mean, you yeah, come yeah. deliver. They're expected. They're expected. But the point is that you're looking at someone who's able to play in a very high pressure situation. One of the interesting things MS Dhoni said when uh, when he, they talked about how he finished games, he said, everyone's saying the batsman is under pressure. But for me, it's the bowler that's under pressure because he has to deliver something that I'm not able to hit. Mm -hmm. And Bumrah's skill in 2020. Now, what happens in 2020 unlike in in sort of the conventional formats of the game is that the batsman is just looking out to hit everything yeah. Bumrah's presence and his control and his discipline that he makes sure that they know that if we go after him we'll get out you know there's that he sort of built that sort of specter in back in batsman's mind because he has variety and he has control and he has an awareness of that situation the the mix of all those things is very hard to get in one person at that key point in time and he's able to do this not just in that's not to say he won't get hit in any over in 2020 and it doesn't happen but he's very very if you look at his stats he's very very uh, economical in 2020 which is a very very difficult format to be economical for a bowler in out of 178 balls he's bowled dot balls i think more 107 out of 178 balls so he's been scored off in only the the, the, the sort of remainder so you can imagine how tough it is to get him away and it doesn't matter what the situation is the moment he's there and he always sort of promises a wicket. So like Rohit Sharma said that, I don't know how he, I know he can do what he does, but I don't know how he does it. So it's just that, it's just, I think training, repetition, and just an awareness of his game in every possible way to sort of soak in. Uh, uh, so what everyone says about modern day cricketers is that they, they're so schooled by data and stuff like that, that they don't really think for themselves, which I think is a falsehood because a bowler, if he's not thinking for himself, he's dead in, in, in 2020. But Bumrah is literally, he's like the world's best bowler. It's like you can wake him up at 3 o'clock in the morning and say, we have 10 runs to defend. This is the final of a World Cup. Now go ahead and do it. And he'll do it. You know, I mean, we have that much belief in him that he'll do it, you know. And uh, now talk about Surya Kumar Yadav's uh, catch. Because, you know, the thing about when he... <laughs> To decide in that split second to let the ball go after catching it because he was going to go over the boundary. What? <laughs> That's <laughs> practice. I mean, apparently they practice this all the time. There's oh. a great account of him in one of the papers today. He said, uh, and what happens is when you're running for a catch like that and you know that there's a possibility of going over, what yeah. do you to look around for the other supporting guy around you that you can just tip it across to them and the person closest to him was Rohit but he was not close enough yeah. uh, and he said I looked Rohit in the eyes and I just went for it because I knew I had to get it but then it's, it's, it's sort of practice and muscle memory that comes in but I mean I'm giving you the scientific answer what's going on in his mind at that time and all of us are screaming I have like really no idea what pulls this kind of thing off. People have compared it to the Kapil Dev catch uh, mm -hmm. of uh, the 1983 World Cup. People have said Sri Sant's catch at the at the 2007 final, which I watched. But this is something else because it required uh, to move at speed, you know. So Kapil was just Kapil sort of sauntered over. He took a few very. He was a great athlete. He he took a few steps. Sri Sant stepped ahead. This was going at speed and you're doing several things other than just catching it. You know, there's your feet, there's your hands, there's your eyes, there's your spatial awareness, all of it that, that was good. And you're letting it go because you're out, yes. then you come yes. back in and you catch yes. it again. It's all those multiple things that you've got to do absolutely correctly. Mm -hmm. Anything could have been, it would have been anything, you know, <laughs> it would have gone wrong badly. Yeah. Virat Kohli, uh, you know, the fact that he wasn't doing well and then here he comes with a 76, which becomes a great uh, sort of. Again, it's a situational sort of thing that he did. And he was helped by the fact that he had Akshar Patel come and hit out yeah. and say, okay, we know that you're going to be there. Uh, yeah. You don't know at that point in time, I was listening to this podcast by uh, Hussein, uh, Nasir Hussain and Michael Atherton. Yeah. He said punditry in, in cricket is basically after the event. So Virat's innings could have been seen as a great innings, paced perfectly, or, it, or had India lost. It could have been seen as an innings that didn't give you enough runs that you needed at the point. You know, it was slow at some point, but it worked out perfectly. And he had people around him that were, were making sure that they were able to get those number of runs. They needed to get to that point, which is your score of 170, 180, whatever it was, seen as a pass score. So I think those, th and Virat was playing, he, he had, a, had a dreadful World Cup. He's such a proud competitor. He just wants to be in the thick of everything. I mean, if he could be 11 people on the field, he would be it. You know, he's like that. So, um, and knowing that it was his last uh, T20 international, his last chance, very realistically, you can say at a World Cup time, because the next World Cup is coming in about four years from now, 
um the 50 over world cup there's going to be another one in two years but they're not going to be the, the rohit and he are not going to be uh, in it so there's him uh, there's rohit you saw you saw the pictures of rohit just banging the ground and just literally with so many of them the the uh, response was relief it was just relief that it was done we had tried for so hard and so long and imagine you've been in a world test championship final in a world 50 over final and in a world and you've lost those you've lost two world semi final world t20 semi finals before it two or going back how many ever years so there's all that there was a great uh, there's a great um, video that uh, ashwin uh, ravichandran ashwin has done with with uh, robin uttappa in which both ashwin and uttappa are sort of crying and they can't get words out because they're so emotional and and, and robin uttappa said we all carried that burden that we haven't had this title for such a long time all cricketers carried it so you're just imagining this whole pool of people Uh, for whom this has happened it's taken so long and there is pressure and you know dravid is of course a very practical sounding person and he said i'm not doing this world cup for anybody i want to world this world cup this world cup is to win and i want to win it that's it for me it's like that why did you climb mount everest he gave a great quote he said it because it's there. there because it's there it's there to win and i want to win it mm-hmm. but you could see in those images that of his you know bellowing and, and shocked that gave him the gave him the trophy yeah, yeah. he said like uh, you could just see it all 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 come out so as much as practical as they like to be they are after all so, they are emotional people so post match we saw you mentioned rahul dravid reacting the way he did yeah. Uh, yeah. you know so expressive we saw virat kohli we saw rohit sharma hardik pandya there was you know these were men who were crying these were men who were relieved and these were men very interestingly to me uh, sharda who seemed to put their families front and center you know so whether their wife their daughter their parents everybody was there either on the phone we saw you know the famous images yeah. of virat kohli yeah. talking to his babies yeah. on the yeah. phone yeah um, how how would you say that you know these guys the in the men in blue have evolved in terms of both their prowess and their persona uh, if, you know tracking 83 from 83 to 2024 i know it's a really long range <laughs> just look just look at the four world cups we have now the two odis and the two t20s yeah. and uh, from kapil's devils as they were called to uh, rohit sharma's team today uh, how would you track what's happened uh, because you know i'm i'm trying to see hmm. uh, you know sort of the changing face of the indian man also you know as as an athlete uh, one of the things to remember uh, anuradha at this point is that the only world cup we won at home was in 2011 which hmm. is where you their families were at the ground yeah. uh, all the families didn't yeah. come to the stage but tendulkar family i remember did and this whole uh, attachment to your family and it's only increased and got much more real and normal uh, mm. in say in virat's time who said that listen i'm willing to go uh, miss a tour on, go- on paternity yeah paternity leave i'm taking yeah. Yeah. which is a great thing uh, it's a great example to also set for this whole other sort of masculine image of you know emotionless and whatever and you know, it's, it, that it's it, it's fine uh, uh, to be uh, to be many things to be a cricketer to be a father to be a son to be whoever and so that's why having all members of your family as many as you could get at the time the boards become a little bit more relaxed about it as well wives can travel there used to be this nonsense rule that wives could not travel because distraction ho jayega this was in the 90s and even then to me it sounded ridiculous you know it sounded absolutely absurd wives or significant others cannot travel significant others that in the 90s nobody talked about but now you can in a, in, in a kind of a relaxed and a mature kind of a way so that's also changed a little bit and this whole thing of that you're going to be sitting down and concentrating the whole time on the match tomorrow you won't do that that's not sensible that's not a sane thing to do you will just burn out before you will play a ball so that's the big change that we've seen uh it's the same the changes like you've seen in the country itself and how people how cricketers present themselves as well um it's a social this is a very much a social media generation uh, uh, the guys that are there not rahul dravid of course but but um, you know all the other younger guys as well pandya certainly is a is is, is a showbiz kind of a man um and uh, the older cricketers were also reflecting the age in which they were seen as basically uh foot soldiers for the nation in a way and so they had they had to be like good boys so in, in now there's a little bit of the we can be bad boys and do crazy ads and do all kind of mad things also and we are superstars and we are and superstars. superstars yeah we are absolutely high paying commercially uh, uh you know very profitable uh, sort of independent superstars on their own and the interesting person in all this is rohit sharma 
because it's like he is like he shows no interest in being this dude or this guy or whatever he's just himself he's just a cricket player so it's almost like he's a throwback from another kind of an age and a very relaxed kind of a person in in many ways his press conference interactions are hilarious i have not been to any of his press conference but what you see and hear so someone asked him that oh you are going to tell us what the secret of playing four spinners he said i was just he said what is the secret he said, there's no secret we just i was just saying it like that you know i've been casual so he doesn't take too much of this very seriously so i said it's like he wears every i mean he's captain of india in all formats and he's had all these uh, you know this the, the fact that they've not been able to win these last three tournaments over the last year it's been must be very tough emotionally for him but it's like he wears it like comfort fit you know he's like acha theek hai this is what this is what is life and he's able to keep cricket on the field and cricket out all the shosha around it he's a very different sort of a personality in that sense in terms of being a leader and you hear a lot of younger players say that they just find him very easy to get along with it's there's not so much intensity but there, and there's not so much distance either so sharda you know when you look at the four cups over the you know over the yeah. decade so 83 2007 2011 and now 2024 um the indian cricket team has metamorphosed quite a lot isn't it i mean the uh, we, we've got validated with this world champion uh, yeah. with the title but the yeah. fact is we were perhaps the best team in the world for a while now isn't it yes yes certainly in certainly in the, in the form in competition play until the last hurdle we were the best team that was there and now we've actually passed that i mean we had a team that was capable of winning the test championship very more than capable of winning the 2020 world cup uh, the, the the two surprise uh, world cups that we've had are 83 and 2007 so sort of unexpected but the last two 2011 and 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 24 are the ones that we were expected to win and uh, the difference between 2011 and this one and say 2023 as well is that in 2011 we were playing sort of like a staggered sort of form in that in that tournament we were good we had a bad game we had a good game we had a bad game kind of went up and down and then everything came together in the last knockouts and uh, that we had to win those three games quarter final semi final final that we able to put everything together whereas in this one they have just played it's almost been a, like i keep last time even in the 23 world cup i said this, these are unrecognizable indian cricketers because of the level at which they are competing performing winning successfully and they are stamping their authority on every other team that they play and, is that and this that? and this is the biggest change isn't it since yes. uh, even yes. from 2011 to now oh, this absolutely. is the biggest change absolutely absolutely i'm not even going to 83 i'm saying no, no. Yeah. I, this 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 whole thing of being consummate professional performers yeah. and being the team to be that's the thing that's been there and yeah. it's all, also it's almost like this victory may have broken a certain barrier about how we can play so this whole you know if you want to build a great cricket team you have consistency of performance over a long period of time is what you need and consistency consistency means titles consistency means domination and sort of we've had the threads of this domination sort of uh, being shown into in in the november world cup before we lost and we saw it here this is a different format of course and then now you want to see how it can translate through say going in the next you know wherever they play again now you you want them to be seen as as that they can beat anybody you know? so so how interesting so you have your world class then you become world champions and now the point is to dominate to be yes. world champions and you know winners of tournaments consistently that is now yes. what distinguishes uh, the indian team at this point of time from the australian team I mean, this is the cusp at which they are uh, correct from the, from the, from the great Australian team of the nineteen nineties or the great West Indian team of the nineteen eighties and yeah. the nineteen nineties and the Australians in the early two thousand. You know those real absolutely beastly performers whom you couldn't stop. That's what you're trying to find and build, and it's taken it it's taken its time, but they seem to have the personnel that are there, and uh, so let's hope that this is just the start of something. uh which comes close to that you know so uh, often you heard ravi shastri say oh this is the greatest indian cricket team that's played in this and you're saying it's fine but they are great cricket team you won in australia that was an incredible performance it's the greatest performance uh in in that 2021 series that you the covid series where you went and beat australia that was the best performance by an indian team ever but do you want to be the team that's creates history and and, and sort of imprints its legacy that's the that's the phase at which we are now Hmm. And this I is the. I mean, I'm hoping my fingers are crossed. Yeah. This is the turning point. This is. You would hope that this is the point that marks that marks the start. You the know, start yeah. of the domination. Yes, you would right. hope. Yeah, we're going to Australia at the end of the year, so it's a good place to dominate if you want. <laughs>
<laughs> so it's interesting that the BCCI and the Board of Control for Cricket in India, they've got to come up with a better name now, isn't it? In 2024, we now have, need this control word has to go. But that is, it's all about control. It's they're all about control. They're not going to let it go. They're going to let it go. Surely. They'll say, what's wrong with us? We won this won so many titles we won two world uh, world t20s two world cups what do you mean it's of course yeah. bcci has won it so bcci yeah. became the most powerful body in the in the cricket in the cricketing world almost for a decade and more now right i mean i think yeah. the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah right. definitely a, tracking the ipl launch correct. And 17 years is what your ipl launch is a, is, is a safe sort is of the time. Safe they were doing time. all their stuff even before that and yeah, in terms of rights in terms, in of, terms of media rights, rights stuff, and i think the yeah. ipl actually uh, sort of and then the way it took off yes. uh, sealed the bcci's yes. position in uh, in the world yes. cricket yes. in the cricketing yes. world uh the interesting thing is that the team did not mirror that in terms of its growth it is now that the team is going to catapult if it can into that period of yes. being a dominating uh, cricket yes. player isn't it the development that you've seen over these last say 17 years outside of the ipl has been that india is able to win overseas test matches very uh, regularly which was not a thing I mean, in yeah. the first 10 years of the tw of uh, of the 2000s, it was not a regular thing, but you started seeing it happen regularly. The development of your fast bowling unit is what has led to this. Uh, and the fact that you realize now that this will be pretty much the template with which you're going to go and play uh, international cricket everywhere. And now um, the whole problem that has happened is that the the standard of the game has separated itself from two, three countries at the top and the rest, at the, at the rest that are sort of tailing. Uh, but you would think that it's it's been a very slow growth, but and you've seen it take place, um, and, and 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 it's almost like uh, this World Cup has been sort of it's it, it marks a passage in time that okay from here is going to be your next step. Even though this is possibly the most democratic and the most uh, the shortest format of the game, mm. where I was going to say success is easy, but it's not as we have seen for so many years. <laughs> But there's a pattern that you need to follow, which you've understood it and you've got hold of it and you said, this is what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And now your job is to is to continue. And, and, and the, this lack of titles basically was what was making in the Indian cricket team feel awful about mm -hmm. because they knew the talent that they had, their sort of the, the, the bench strength, the numbers from which they can choose these incredible the resources, resources, the money, the, the resources, support, everything had everything, fallen into place. Everything yeah. was there. Uh, and, they, and the results was what was uh, awaited for. This is one result that you want more. And there'll have to be more because there's no there's no reason for the not, for us not wanting more. Role of the coach now that Rahul Dravid is ending on such a high. I believe that in a, in, in, very soon you'll have the new coach announced after the Zimbabwe tour or so. Yeah, they're saying, so, so the coach's role now becomes one of being, um, so Dravid's at a pretty high standard now for the for the coach that comes in because of the fact that he's able, there's a very interesting interview by Rohit in which he said he also changed himself in the way with which he he, he talked to the younger players. So he worked with the younger players. He's worked with a lot of the younger players uh, coming up now and he's responded to the older players and, and, and it's worked well. So there is that whole management uh, sort of a thing that's there. Gautam Gambhi's name has come up as the, yes. as the main candidate to succeed. He's not a man who believes in data or whatever. He says, I just go by instinct. Dravid is the, is the data guy. Dravid is a guy who, he doesn't depend totally on it, but he definitely uses values. it. Yeah. He values it. And he'll see, you'll, you'll see that uh, sort of mix. But uh, Gambhi is a great competitor himself. Mm -hmm. And um, he's done well in his yeah, in the IPL. with Correct. The so you're, you're hoping that it'll all sort of fit, fit in and it'll work out because it's, it's literally not uh, so complicated once you've, you've figured out that that's what you need to do. So you've, you've got to just pick the right people for the right situation, read the conditions well and, and play all 11. And then um, ha you have people of that talent and that ability. You know, you've got that. You've got so much to choose from. So you, you so, hope that that's the way it will go. You know, uh, in this tournament, we saw, and actually even in the previous one, we saw Afghanistan suddenly get a lot of love, a lot of fan attention. And of course, because of the, you know, dire condition in which the country is. And here you have, so it was everyone's favorite underdog team, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. In a sense. Yeah. Um, do you think India today is a popular champion across the world? Yeah, I saw a little video where Viv Richards was in the dressing room uh, with the players and he says, you've got a good thing going the way you're playing, you know, your cricket, I love it. If the guys in Maroon don't get it done, I'm backing you. 
you know yeah. so very clearly everyone's favorite team if they're not if they don't have their national team in play are indian cricketers popular in that sense today I- I think I mean I'm just saying this in a just a gut kind of a response to what oh. you see and you hear. I think Indian cricketers are respected and loved and admired hugely for their talent and what they are able to do. I think the Indian cricket's popularity uh, of course there are so many Indians everywhere that it doesn't yeah. really matter who loves us or who doesn't outside right. the outside an Indian uh, yeah. uh, sort of uh, uh, diaspora uh, diaspora yeah. whatever. um i think they really admired for their talent but what uh, indian cricket is also attached to the bcci which is where the bad press kind of comes from and where is that whole thing of being bullies and whatever whatever and and doing that but i i'm i'm very very clear that the indian team is separated from that the indian team is not seen as a bcci's team but the they be because they don't behave in a particular way they are very they conduct themselves very well uh, they are great competitors and they are supremely talented uh, players and with reference to afghanistan i think we also have to point out that the bcci has helped Afgan- afghanistan its home uh, home stadium is in greater noida you know so there's that uh, as well it's not uh, it's not that the indian cricket has not had a part to play but i think it's the boardroom stuff that that uh, um, i mean looking at it from the outside i'm not talking about as an internal person looking from the outside it's, it's the boardroom stuff that kind of makes people feel that oh your money is too much and you got a uh, uh, you, you want know, to call the shots you, you want, want to call the shots they organize this thing michael won had that quote about whatever about the the scheduling and the yes. i'm saying my response to that is look every single country has signed off on that agreement so where was your country when they had to say no i'm sorry you cannot do this where was australia say say i'm sorry you cannot do this you know don't use uh you know the lack of courage on the part of your board administrators to to uh, sound off you know it's your guys that have signed off on this nonsense so um that's the that's the sort of double thing that's 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 going on i think indian cricketers are loved and they're appreciated for their talent and what they bring to it i mean every time there's a batting talent that comes up like a uh, bumrah for example i'm sure has got massive number of fans outside uh indian people um rishab someone like rishab pant he comes up from somewhere they'll say you know um something i i remember i was speaking once to hussein about something uh, something about rahane or something he said has india ever produced an ugly batsman it's not possible you know so that was his thing he said i don't think it it, it, it happens so um this is of course many years ago when ugly and beautiful definitions about bat- batting were different but whatever so there's definitely that there's definitely that uh, appreciation for the talent that uh, the indians have how what it turns out to in terms of social media fans and all the rest of the ugliness that comes around it that's completely different but i think in terms of pure talent and how they conduct themselves uh, we are not the sledgers of the world you know we don't get caught in these absolute nonsense type of things that are going on so that i think people do appreciate do you think that the political pressure that was felt in the run up to the previous odi world cup that was hosted in india and then the election that has just been conducted uh, do you think that that pressure that we saw the political pressure which you have documented and talked about do you see that ease up a little bit i think it, it might it might start again because it might start again because a title has been won so it might it might just sort of take its own form in in the next uh it might start again there's no denying that uh i, I think um, you know there were the state cricket associations who just felt completely strapped by how this thing was being run for them and it was not done in a way they were used to it so all that may have eased off it doesn't mean that the control um of indian cricket is suddenly eased off on everybody it's not so it's 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 like parliament it's still it's still in the um i don't think there was political pressure on the team at in 2023 in that sense they were in that in their bubble or whatever it just happened we talked about the uniform uniform is the only yeah. thing that kind of uh, that kind of uh, uh, directly uh, directly sort of it was taken to them in in, in that sense and, and and they responded in the way that they responded um i don't think that would happen again because because of the fact that even when someone was telling me that look you have made this massive campaign called bleed blue everyone's wearing blue shirts and you suddenly want to do the opposite it just just defies belief mm-hmm. um you know i don't think that kind of thing uh, uh could have happened at this point because of a playing in the west indies will it will it why will it uh, get less i mean i don't think it will reduce in a way because it's cricket is such a 
personal, passionate, pan Indian kind of thing that's there, and everyone wants to jump irresistible on. Irresistible for anybody who's in power like to to you. Lowest use hanging fruit, like yeah. lowest, lowest, lowest. Even more than cinema, I think you know. Uh, now you got the Olympics coming, so maybe the pressure will off cricket a little bit, but yeah, not not sure how much. Yeah, you know, to see it in this way. And certainly not in board politics. I mean, there's been no change in the political structure of the board uh, that there is the, in, in, in the whole dynamics uh, that there are in, in the board at the moment. I mean, Roger Binney, a former World Cup winner, was there at that event. And Why he's the president he of the BCCI. The stage? Yeah. And he's the president of the BCCI. Why was he not on the stage? Mm. Why was he not giving the trophy? You know, so whatever. So I'm just saying, I'm just putting it out there. Yeah. So that control is going to be kept by anybody yes. who can hold it, right? Who can hold it, and yeah. we know who holds it now. Um, uh, Sharda, one quick question, uh, and I'm going to wrap it up. But this, uh, you know, the fact that this was hosted in the US, the fact that uh, all the big Tech, technology companies are now yeah. run by yeah. Indians who are all first generation Americans and who, uh, you know, who uh, who are deeply invested in cricket and understand and follow the game. Um, the fact that it was hosted in the U.S., um, the fact that the U.S. now has its own league uh, that that's and teams are owned by some of these guys. What do you make of um, cricket's domination beyond India and the original cricket play playing nations. These are two two things. Cricket's domination or presence outside India and old cricket nations is a lot of it is ICC's work with reference to say Afghanistan or Uganda. Uganda is East Africa, but you know countries like Papua New Guinea or like the Thailand women's team. So that's a separate. I mean countries that were there, which I mean Zimbabwe didn't make it. Because correct. of correct. You know, correct. qualify so, from Africa, which yeah, is yeah. Quite, they, they couldn't quite. because of yeah, they, they didn't qualify. So that's a separate sort of thing that's there. But mm -hmm. cricket going to the West, going to America, yeah. it's yeah. part of a longish kind of a plan, the way I'm looking at it. It's been there forever. Uh, yeah. the Los Angeles Olympics is one end of it. Yes. Uh, in 2028. So and cricket will be played be, as an Olympic sport. Played as an Olympic sport, just only six countries to start with, I, I believe. Um, and there are certain sort of rules uh, of the Olympic movement that will have to be followed, but it will mean funding for other smaller nations as well. It will be a much more equitable distribution of India, International Olympic Committee funding. So that's one end of it. That's the ICC side. This major league cricket that's there started by these tech billionaires um, to try and make, I spoke, I, I did a piece uh, last week or a bit in which he said there's this guy from a team called the Washington Freedom, which I thought was a lovely name, uh, Sanjay Goval. He said that, look, we don't, we know that we're not going to get ahead of baseball, uh, American football, NHL and, and, and basketball. We want to be the fifth or the sixth largest league in America. So at least to have a presence there and to spread um, through things like school competitions. And also there's that desire to make cricket more accessible. I was surprised when he told me that lacrosse, apparently, everybody doesn't play lacrosse, but they know lacrosse because it's played in some, at it's some point. Cool, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's at the Olympics again. So there's that, there's lacrosse and rugby that have a larger presence, you know, in, in the, because the US market is uh, the biggest sporting market in the world. It's also the most competitive. But those are the sort of two, three things oh. that are going on. And we keep hearing about American sports like basketball, you know, yeah. it's trying to enter into India, isn't it? And to find a market in India. And right. It is in uh, cricket, which is, which for all practical purposes, an Indian sport. Asian, <laughs> South Asian sport. Yeah. yeah. Right. Trying Entry. to sell itself over there. Yeah. yeah. And the uh, what's happened is that uh, because governance is such an issue in sports administrations, particularly at, at, at a point in time when they need to professionalize and, and be sustainable, uh, this league that's been created, it's almost like a parallel governance structure to USA cricket or whatever that the body keeps changing its name, it gets banned, it gets unbanned, whatever. So this uh, this this league is supposed to be the sort of the the framework of US cricket. So they have these major, they have major league cricket and all these major league teams have minor league teams as well. So they've got these two tier uh, sort of structures in place. He said, we are not here for the league. We are not here just to make money out of the league. We're here to grow the game as well. So it's part, it's like a parallel um, uh, governance, administration, pathway structure for, for cricket in the US. They've actually, they actually got a uh, um, got a lot of cr cricketers with American origin, parents, family, whatever, to come to come and play. You had Corey Anderson of New Zealand. Uh, there are some Indian players that are there. Unmuk Chand, un India under-19 uh, captain, winning captain. So they've got a lot of players to come and say, settle into the community and become part of it and be teaching, coaching, working. So it's a it's a slow sort of a 
a, a kind of a, a plan to help the sport grow be more visible in that sense to become more visible to be on mainstream television all those and, and you see the a tournament the, a world cup t20 tournament like the one which was co-hosted by the usa a contribute to popularizing the game or do you uh, think it remained largely with the indian diaspora i think it, it did they did the they sort and of the first generation the boxes. Yeah. i mean they ticked the boxes that they were there at the new york times yeah you know, they had an article, they were there in the Good Morning America show. So they did all that stuff uh, just to maybe kind of sound a little bit of a bit of a, um, you know, like a loud ringtone to say, OK, we are here as well. We are coming in. This is what we want to do. And this is how different the sport is from what you imagine it to be about with tea breaks and lunch breaks and whatever, you know, and they, and, and they actually got uh, US space sports influencers. Uh, to come and do commentary and you know to try and sort of establish that link between basketball and cricket uh, the best venue actually for cricket in the u.s is dallas it's not new york because new york looks fantastic but new york state it was eventually long island but dallas is the place where they're trying to build the sport from bottom up rather than this new york was like a top-down thing that they had just planted down there right so long so some way to go before we have any clarity uh -huh. on uh, how cricket does uh, in yeah. in the u.s Ten years. <laughs> 10 years. Uh, <laughs> Sharda, uh, you want to, I'm going to close this. Uh, you want to give us a peek into what you're writing because uh, once you write that and it goes out there, there'll be a little big little buzz, buzz that that's generated. No, 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 I'm, I mean, I'm writing about, I'm writing uh, uh, sort of about Rohit Sharma. I'm writing something about the whole uh, tournament for two separate, two, two separate places. Wonderful. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the one on the, on Rohit Sharma is for the week and the one on this is for Hindustan Times. My, on, 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 the, on the tournament as such as for Hinston Times. I'm going to look forward to reading okay. both and uh, thank you so much for making time and uh, you know this this conversation on the back of the previous one which was where this wonderful team went and fell at the f final <laughs> hurdle and here it was it cracked that final hurdle and we're talking about world domination for world a domination exactly for nothing a, less for a considerable period of time now so it's completely it? Indian fan cricket fan reaction now we're going to rule the world it's sorted we're done we're <laughs> No one can beat us ever, you know, that kind. It's just that kind of a reaction. Right. Thank you, Sharda. It's always a pleasure to listen to you. I'm looking forward to your writing. Sure. We're going to be checking in with you as the Olympics start to find out the impact and the importance of all the sports in which India participates and our performance. Thank you, Anuradha. Love, love chatting with you. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to like us if you've liked this conversation and to subscribe and share because that's the only way we can keep talking.